This day I want to speak to you about the gospel outreach school we have. We call it Go Evangelism School. So God has placed in my heart to start evangelism school. And ever since we've started evangelism school, we've been training people to evangelize. Uh, we have a structure where people qualify as privates, sergeants, lieutenants, captains, and then colonels. And this evangelism school is focused on bringing the gospel the way Matthew 10 and Luke 10 clarifies how we should bring it. Matthew 10 and Luke 10 speaks about the command that Yeshua gave his apostles in Matthew 10. And in Luke, Luke 10, it says he gave the same command on bringing the gospel to 70 others. So it is healing the sick cleansing the lepers, raising the dead, driving out demons, preaching the gospel in villages, in cities, in marketplaces. So we incorporate that school, the school of Jesus Christ, his evangelism school. We take that and then we start teaching it to people. And we've seen amazing, amazing miracles. We've seen amazing testimonies as well. So today I took it upon myself to start this series of teachings of evangelism so that people can look, go online, go on the radio station, yeshuaradio.org.za, and go through these teachings. And hopefully, I believe it will help anyone that wants to take on evangelism. So we're going to start at Scripture. We are reading some verses out of Matthew 10, and then some verses out of Luke 10, and then we'll explain from there on. So Matthew 10 says, Matthew 10 verse 1, and when he, he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now so we're skipping on to Matthew 10 verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, from verse 7, And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Matthew 10 verse 9, Provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. And into whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till you go thence. And when you come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words, when you depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Now I'm going to Luke 10 just to show you that the same command Yeshua gave his 12 apostles, he gave 70 others as well. So Luke 10 from verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come. Therefore, said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your way, behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse, nor script, nor shoes, and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the Son of Peace be there, your peace shall rest upon it. And if not, it shall return to you again. And in the same house remain eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from that house to house. And into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as they said before you, and heal the sick that are therein. And say unto them, The kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not, go your way out into the streets of the, of the same, and say, Even the very dust of your city which cleaves 
unto us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be ye sure of this, that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable in the day, in that day, in the judgment day, for Sodom than for that city. So when, Jesus, when Yeshua began to proclaim this message, he said that the kingdom of God has come close to you. He proclaimed revival 2,000 years ago. So, and we read in Ephesians 4 of giftings that when he was crucified after his resurrection, after he taught his disciples how to evangelize and how to spread the good news for 40 days, he ascended into heaven, right? The Ephesians 4 says he gave gifts to men, uh, apostles, evangelists, prophets, teachers, and pastors. And, and the main purpose of these gifts are to build up, if you read Ephesians 4, the body of Messiah, the people that would, that would be reached with the good news, that would believe in Yeshua, be filled with the Holy Spirit, and be part of a fellowship that continually teach and learn the doctrines of the apostles and the prophets and the words of Messiah. The, this is the body of Messiah, but these giftings are made to build them up and to reach more people to bring them into the body of Messiah. So with evangelism, this is a school, this is the way Yeshua said you should go out. Right, so I'm going to break this into sections. Mainly we're going to focus on, on Luke 10. The only reason why is so that people could, can understand it's not only for the 12 apostles. Yeshua actually chose 70 others as well. And these were some of his disciples. So Luke 10 verse 1 says that Jesus, Yeshua, called them. He called them to himself and he appointed them to go two by two into whatever place he will send. So, with this evangelism school, you, sh you must know that Yeshua calls. If you are interested in evangelism, the very first thing that you need to set in your heart is that you know that Yeshua calls you. Yeshua calls you. It is not you that want to. It's not only you that want to. It's not only your feelings moving you. You need to know that if Yeshua calls you, you need to obey him. Because in many instances, while I was evangelizing, while I am evangelizing, I sometimes do not feel like I want to go into villages or into townships or into cities or minister to some people that are sick. But because Yeshua called me, I need to do it because I obey his command. See, so Yeshua called them here in Luke 10 verse 1 and sent them forth. So if they didn't go forth, they were disobeying a command of Yeshua. But I believe these 70 were excited to go forth because they saw great signs and wonders and miracles and they believed that the revival was proclaimed through Yeshua, the kingdom of God, right? So he said that he sent him two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself would come. So now we understand that the Holy Spirit has been poured forth. It is written in Acts 2. And from Acts 2, we see these great influence of the Holy Spirit and we see these great acts of the Holy Spirit. So now, we are sent by Yeshua into every place because the Holy Spirit's already there. Right? Here it says that Yeshua sent him two by two wherever he would come. But we know that Yeshua has poured out his Spirit over the face of the earth. So we go where the Spirit of God leads us because the Spirit of God is already there. So, let me expound on this, right? So he says, into every city where he himself would go. So now we understand into every city where the Holy Spirit is. So with evangelism, I've found people that says, I want to evangelize, but I want to evangelize in this way, or I want to evangelize only in, in marketplaces, or I only want to evangelize on street corners. I understand that, but according to Yeshua's command, he sent the 17 to every place that he wanted them to go, right? So with evangelism, your heart should be set on focusing on Yeshua. Focus on, on hearing his voice so that he can send you. If he wants you to go into a tavern, you should go into a tavern. If he wants you to go into a pub, you should go into a pub. If he wants you to go into a street or into a dark alley, you should go there. Into, into the wilderness or into a church or into a village. You should be able to hear his voice. So with evangelism in the school, we teach people to Listen and learn to hear God's voice. Learn to hear the Holy Spirit's voice so that he can send you, right? So after you have cultivated that heart to go, you've heard the command of Yeshua and Yeshua is beginning to send you out. He says, 
Therefore said he unto them, verse 2, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. The heart of Yeshua is to send more and more people into his harvest. So souls, people, wherever Yeshua sends you to, like I say, to pubs or to malls or to taverns or to cities or villages, wherever this, the earth is God's harvest. Souls are the harvest of God. So he needs souls to come in. And you are sent forth as a laborer in his harvest, right? So he says, not only for you to go, he says, pray that others would go as well. So in this, in evangelism, when your heart is set on fire for evangelism, when the Lord calls you, he also equips you to set other people on fire. And he says, pray that other will go, others will go as well. Others will, will want to go. Others will, will want to go with you. Others will want to go and learn how to be evangelism. So as you go to evangelize, remember that as you speak to people, as you pray for people, as people get healed, as people receive the word of the good news, they will want to start evangelizing as well. They will want to start spreading God's words as, word as well because you in your private time, in your inner room, should pray, Lord, send out more people into the harvest. So this is the second aspect. Prayer. Prayer and time with God. Prayer because you understand that it, it is His harvest. Prayer because you know that you cannot go if He doesn't equip you. So prayer is a very important aspect. So prayer because you believe that God is the one that equips you. Prayer because you need to hear His voice going out. Prayer because prayer brings an increase in a harvest and an increase in workers and laborers. Knowing that God will hear your prayer. Yeshua commands you to pray that the Lord of the harvest will send forth laborers into his harvest. So, prayer. That's the second aspect. So, I just want to pause there and speak a bit, or give some testimonies, right? I'll start with me, and then I'll begin to speak about others. I remember looking at a teaching. The teaching is the last reformation. And it is a teaching laid by Torben Sonnachar, and I believe in Torah, so he, he believes in holiness and some aspects of God's law, but not in all aspects. I keep the festivals, I, I eat clean food, but I do have the Holy Spirit. And we do see healings and deliverances, and I do see baptisms. I do see people being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking tongues and being set free. So, but his teaching really grabbed me because as in verse 1, right, Luke 10 verse 1, Yeshua began to call my heart, call me. Like I felt this feeling in my heart or this, this drawing toward evangelism, to getting souls to repent. Because he has healed me of many sicknesses. He has delivered me of many demons. The last time I counted, it was 14 demons, right? And he has given me a life full of, full of life, full of power, full of energy, and also a family. So, I want to share that with others. The gospel I made my own, so now I need to share it with others. And that was Yeshua calling. Right? I couldn't hear his voice. I felt the stuck in my heart that I need to speak. But I needed to be equipped. I needed to be equipped. I needed to make sure how to go. So I began to search all over the internet about evangelism. I found a whole lot of stuff. And I had to sort through a whole lot of stuff because there are weird stuff, right? There are weird stuff on the internet. And you need to be able to discern. So biblical teaching and evangelism, very important. Don't just take anything. Make sure it's biblical. So you will have to have a, some kind of knowledge about God's word. God's word, prayer, is like the two keys of being a, a good, holy, acceptable evangelist. All right, so you get weird stuff. But I started going through the internet for some time, really about two years. I found his teachings. And this man began to teach on Luke 10 and, and Matthew 10. And it, it was teachings that I heard before, but the fire and the, and the energy that he had, it drew, drew me. It drew me so much that I began to pray in, in night times, in the mornings, and during the day I would set an alarm like for 10 o'clock. Then I would pray the prayer for, of Luke 10 verse 
verse 2, Lord, send out laborers into your harvest. Send out laborers into your harvest. So the, this alarm would go off and I would start praying it. And my heart was so drawn to evangelism that I remember one night while I was praying and this happened. I was praying for a while. Then this happened. I felt this very strong urge to ask the Lord to baptize me with His Spirit again. I was filled with His Holy Spirit, but I believe that time I, I opened up myself to His power. And I asked Him, baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Send me as evangelist like you send these people. And then I went into the shower. I put on the shower. And I, I believed, Lord, you baptize me now, right? I climbed out of the shower. I didn't feel anything strange, but when I look back, my life changed radically. I began to go, like literally that night, I drove with my car and began to pray for people. So you see, I felt the tugging of God's heart to go out. Then I was praying for a while to, Lord, equip, equip me. Lord, send me out. Send other people out. So this is exactly the pattern of Luke 10. And then I began to go out, starting to, to pray for people. In the beginning, I didn't see any healings, trust me. No deliverances. But the fire that burned in my heart for evangelism, I couldn't quench, right? So I started to pray and pray and pray and pray until I saw healings and deliverances. And ever since then, it has been escalating with healings. We've seen not only pain go, but we've seen organs heal. We've seen cancer healed. We've seen eyes open. We've seen deaf ears here. We've seen, we've seen a lot of sicknesses healed. So I'm only telling you this because this pattern here is biblical. And make sure that you follow this pattern. Don't be without knowledge. Don't be ignorant. Because ignorance can cause a lot of damage in your walk as evangelist. You can be intimidated by demons. You can follow after people that really do not teach biblical doctrine evangelism, right? So I've been teaching now. Let me tell you about some testimonies of people that we've been teaching. So we've been teaching young men, predominantly. To evangelize and the same pattern I teach them. And as I teach them the same pattern, I see great things happening in their lives. I actually see them growing faster than I've grown. It took me years to see what I'm seeing now, to renew my mind, to renew my mind according to what God says. But their minds are being renewed quickly. And they see miracles, strokes heal, they see pain go, they see People filled with the Holy Spirit, deliverance, they see it in a very short span. Because this evangelism school is of Yeshua, it's written in the Bible, and his anointing is resting on there, but they follow that pattern as well. Let me go on to the next pattern. This is then the last pattern that I want to speak to you now. The next video, we'll continue on this. So, after you've prayed and after you've, done, you've saturated yourself with prayer and with spending time with the Lord, and now you know that you must go out into his harvest. He says, go your way. Verse 3, Luke 10, verse 3. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Don't be ignorant into the field that he sent you. It is his harvest, yes. But his harvest is full of wolves. They lurk and they, they are very cunning. If you go to evangelize, be very careful. Be gentle and wise. Be sharp. In the beginning, I just wanted to lay my hands on everybody, on anybody that I could get my hand on. It doesn't matter what his background is. It doesn't matter if he's truly repentive or not. And I actually got demons by that. And I had to go through deliverance. And it was strong deliverances that I had to go through to deliver me of the demons that I got from other people, right? Because praying for healing is fine. Praying for deliverance is fine because it's the power of the Holy Spirit that searched through, but imparting the gift of the Holy Spirit, like laying on your hands, you can't baptize with the Holy Spirit, but when you lay your hands there, Yeshua manifests and Yeshua baptizes that person. And I would do that with many people. Lay on my hands, see when Yeshua will show up and baptize people. And think, I could feel things entering me and then I would go to a pastor and he would do deliverance and I would be delivered because I was ignorant of this. Right, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. So people would want to fight with you. People would want you to be harmed. And the demons as well. Devils would want to steal, kill, and destroy your faith, your life, even. So be careful. So 
evangelism will take place uh, because it is the gift of the Holy Spirit. But evangelism will take place effectively if you are careful. Right. So be careful of demons. You get a lot of demons. I've laid my hands on car guards. I've laid my hands on junkies. I've laid my hands on prostitutes. I've laid my hands on different cultures. And as I grew in authority, the authority meaning discernment in God's word, as I grew to know the Holy Spirit's voice, as miracles and signs and wonders began to increase, I began to grow in a discernment who to lay my hands on and who not, who to speak to and who not at that moment, how to speak to. Do you speak into a marketplace with everybody? Do you stand up? What tools do you use? So as a lamb, I began to be careful. I began to be wise and cunning to avoid wolves because the wolves are not part of God's harvest. The harvest are the plants, right? The grain. And these are the people that God wants to bring in, but not the wolves. So hopefully this helps. Be careful, be discerning, and then also be on fire for the Holy Spirit, for the Ruach HaKodesh with, gospel, with spreading the gospel. And as you search for him, look at this video, pray through it. I believe it will help. It really helped me. There are a lot of teachings as well. Teachings that at the end of this series, I will speak about the names of the people, speak about the teachings like Andrew Wamak and the Lost Reformation, Torben Sonnerhart. There are a lot of things I do not, do not, I'm not used to hearing it. I do not, I do not advocate some of their teachings, but many of their teachings I do. As you listen to this series, you start to get discernment on how to listen, what to look out for, and how to start your evangelism trip. Shalom.